Hey listeners, before we get to the episode, we want to take a moment to address the June 24th Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This decision stripped away the legal right to have a safe and legal abortion. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans and others should other countries do this too. This decision could also lead to the loss of other rights. To learn more about what you can do to help, go to choice.crd.co. We encourage you to speak up, take care, and spread the word. Thank you. Hello, friends. My name is Dave Miller. And I am Niles Spain, And we're your fuck buddies. We're a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations, turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we find questions either online or from our wonderful listeners, and we answer them on this here podcast for your ears on the topics of sex and dating. Now, we recorded last week in our closet, mm-hmm. in my closet, and then Niall did a powerful move and gave everyone COVID. Might have been Dane. We don't know. But we both got COVID (laughs) from the closet. Um, It certainly wasn't our trip to Boston in packed karaoke bars. Definitely wasn't definitely wasn't that that golfing asshole who kept complaining about wearing a mask and proudly proclaiming that he was unmasked with 10,000 people every day for the past week at some golf tournament. Couldn't been him. No way. No way. It wasn't sitting on a recycled air airplane for (laughs) way too long. No, for hours. But we came through pretty all right. Like, yeah, I would say I'm I still have to do that that last test to see that I'm out of the woods. But I feel I feel pretty good. I like it. I never would have even known if you hadn't told me I would have been at work fucking slinging drinks. You're welcome. This is your second tour. This is my first visit. I know. But it, is it more embarrassing that you got it in June of 2022? I've seen a lot of memes of people being like, I can't get COVID now. Not now. I don't know. I just think it's very impressive. That you made That's it this far? I am. Yeah. I think we, we, in our friend group, I think we still have two friends who haven't gotten it. It's true. It's true. It's crazy. Crazy. But mm-hmm. they're also the two that get to work from home and don't have to. Exactly. Not have to deal with yeah. hundreds of people a day like we do. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that was us. We, co- we kicked COVID's ass this week. And now we're here to kick the ass of your sex and dating quandaries. Your, you ready to go? Questions. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to start off by checking in on seduction because I feel oh. like it's been a while. Okay. We can do these as quickly as possible, which is kind of my goal. I'm going to hit you with a twofer. This is the first one. This is by Television Many 3819. Anyone of success approaching at the Roe v. Wade protest? Tried this today with no sex. <laughs> Obviously, there's a solid female to male ratio with girls who are probably DTF. Anyone have any luck? What makes you think with everything that has happened? That women are DTF right now. What what could get you in the mood more than having your rights stripped away and having fear for your future? Yeah, and the, the, the one thing that could lead to all sorts of bullshit, which is sex. Yeah. Like, I can't think of a, a, less, a less sound plan to get laid than to go to a Roe v. Wade protest and be like, Hey, I know you all are really pissed, but how would you like to maybe have sex with a stranger? Yeah, uh, people in seduction, very smart. Uh, this is another one. This is Jelly I3. When girls call you out on negging, what do you say? Sometimes girls call out the negging. How do you respond? Uh, you have to go into pausing, which is, which is just like really obnoxious compliments. My answer would just be don't go fucking negging. What are you doing? No, that's a bad, that's a bad answer. (laughs) Because you, you gotta remember seduction's a roller coaster, right? True. Yeah. I don't remember who said it, but someone said it. It was it was a journey, a roller coaster. You so got to bring them if, on the emotional roller coaster. They can never know what exactly. you're going to do next. So if if they're like, "Oh wow, did you just neg me by saying my shoes are ugly?" Is that? And then you're like, "Yeah, but your eyes are beautiful." I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> they don't know what's going on. It's true. That's it's my true. answer. The old, the old eye shoes swap around. Okay, how about a real one? Um, yes, let's, uh, you know, maybe answer a question that someone sent in. All right. This is from Agent Palm Tree. Hey, Dana Nile, just started listening to your podcast. I appreciate how real and honest you guys are with all the questions. I'm in an interesting situation. Hope you can help me out. Thank you, Agent Palm Thanks. Tree. 
Yeah, thanks. Six weeks ago, I broke up with my girlfriend. We've been dating since high school, living together for two years, and it got to the point where I just wasn't feeling into it anymore. My brain said everything was perfect, but my heart said otherwise, and I had concerns about our future together. To avoid wasting any more of her time or mine, I broke things off. It's been challenging, but overall, it went better than I envisioned. I'm single now, and think it would be best for me to be single for some time to focus on things I enjoy doing, such as connecting with old friends, traveling, golfing, working out, etc., Although I have this recurring thought about this girl I met two years ago. We worked a summer job together and really hit it off. Both her and I were in different relationships at the time, so nothing happened. However, we keep in touch. Planning to work the same summer job this year, and it turns out she'll be there as well. I'm torn because she's stunning. We share a connection. I would like to ask her out eventually now that we're both single. But given I'm freshly out of a long-term relationship, I think I need time to myself. I have an irrational fear if I don't ask her out soon, she will snap up in another relationship and I could lose my chance. What do you guys think? Do I try to be friends with her for a while before making any dating slash relationship moves? Are my fears logical? Cheers. Okay. Um, one, I, there's a lot here that I want to congratulate you on. And it, I feel like that's a rare thing we get to do when people ask us questions. Yeah. Um, one, you realize that there was something wrong in your relationship. We didn't go into details and that's fine. We, we don't need to know all the details, but it it takes a a pretty strong person to break out of the comfort zone and be like, hey, this isn't what I want anymore, and I think we should end. And I I, I really want to commend you on that. That's that's a very mm-hmm. difficult thing to do, and uh, it, it takes it takes a lot of a lot of gumption to get that done. So good for you for doing that. Oh, Second, you did great, I love it. Yeah. Second, you also realize that like this is an opportunity. You know, to to reconnect with old friends, to get into the things you like, to to sort of like work on yourself. And that's kind of what we want to do after a breakup. Um, mm-hmm. I know there's there's usually like two paths that we go down. Like for me, every time I get into a, or, or a relationship ended, I'd be like, cool, it's workout time. And I work I, I like get very fit after every breakup. Um and there are other people who are just sort of like they they spiral. So I think it's I think it's really great that you are taking this as an opportunity to reconnect with old friends and uh, reignite some of your passions that maybe you didn't have enough time to to do. That's awesome. Good for you. No, I love it. And finally, I think it's pretty good foresight to be like, hey, as much as I have a thing for this woman, maybe getting into a relationship right off the bat isn't the best idea. And I would have to agree with you. I don't think rushing into something that you, or with someone that you have a connection with or you feel you have a connection with right off the bat is a good idea because yeah. at least at least not until you've processed it. And I don't know mm-hmm. how long you take the process, you know? And the good thing um, is you also seem to know that, which again, it's it's all positive so far. So here's my suggestion to you. You say you stay in contact with them. Great. That means that you're not going to be coming out of left field with a like, hello there. How are you uh, out of nowhere? Um, and you're working this summer job together, which is like primo situation because you can organically kind of bring up that it, when you, if you haven't seen her in a while, and she's like, Hey, how you been? You'd be like, ah, oh, great. Really good. Um, you know, you can casually bring up the the fact that you're single again in, you know, a fun, playful way, or just like as a toss away, just be like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I've recently been single and, and I'm, you know, getting my life together, whatever you want to say. I even feel like the fact that you guys were living together probably gives you a pretty good innocent segue into this because you'd be like, oh, I moved recently. Yeah, me and my girlfriend broke up. So like just got my own new place or whatever. Yeah. Or even just like, oh, I just got a brand new roommate. Like my girlfriend moved out depending on, you know, how it went. It's it's an easy way to slip it in without just being like, I am single. Exactly. And then you can use this time that you spend together at work seeing if if what you felt was actually a thing and not just rose tinted glasses. Cause I think a lot of us, when we're in relationships, find someone we have like kind of a crush on and we're like, we kind of romanticize that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and because there's and- no possibility of it and because it never happens, it could be whatever you want. The possibilities yeah. are endless. Right. So I think this is a great opportunity to sort of like dip your toes in the water and see if, if the temperature is still right. And if it is, a great way to sort of, especially if this is just a seasonal thing, dating your coworkers can be difficult. So once the season is done, once the summer is over, you now have the door open to be like, hey, look, I had a really great time hanging out with you again. And I would love to like, I would love to go on a date with you once you guys are done work. And if it doesn't go well, you, there's enough time. Like there's a whole year that'll pass to help sort of like cool down the awkwardness of it. Mm-hmm. If you guys do decide to work together again. And you don't have to worry about complicating work right off the bat 
by dating someone you work with. Mm-hmm. It also gives you, what, another three, four months buffer, which is, you know, not insignificant. Um, who knows how you'll feel after that. Now, the interesting thing for me is that, like, if you only see each other when you work this summer job, like, how close are you guys in normal life? Yeah, like, in terms of, like, geographically, you know, because if this person moves in for this job or, you know what I mean? Like, is the relationship even viable outside of this kind of, like, summer time? Because if not, it could be great to just have a summer fling. Yep, absolutely. You know, because then... And- You'll have your fun time with this person. If it's not viable in real life anyway, you don't have to worry about that not happening. And then it's always a great way to get over someone else and you'll have a great time. So that's a possibility. And I'm not completely against the idea of this still just being a summer fling or at least like having a summer fling. Because Mm -hmm. as we've talked about before, relationships don't need to be like, you are not relationship. You are rebound. You are Mm -hmm. sex. And then boop, 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 like, oh, relationship detected. I'm going to date this person now. Like, it's not like that. So if if it leads casually and naturally and organically to, like, you know, a sexual relationship with this person while you guys are working together, great. Make sure you're you're clear and, and uh, upfront with where you are in terms of, like, what your expectations are. If, like, mm-hmm. if you're very clear being like, hey, so I, like... You know, as I mentioned, I'm just at a relationship. I am sort of, you know, I'm still processing things. and But like, I don't want to, by all means, like, I'm happy to pursue things with you. I just want you to know where my head, you know what I mean? Like, be be clear and, and don't lead them on, especially if, if this is something you would like to see progress to something in the future. Because my partner and I started as, you know, secret work fuck buddies. Mm-hmm. And we've been together for like almost seven years now, six years. Yeah, well, even like me and my partner, when we met, like I had, we were both out of long term relationships that uh, we also needed space out of. And we were together casually for like a year. And then it clicked and it was great. And it's like, if we hadn't spent that time, like who knows how close we would have been or if we would have broken it off or bitten the bullet too soon or whatever. But like the time worked for us both. And it's like, I saw something during the week that I love and it was being with someone or casual sex doesn't mean treating someone casually. You could still have a wholesome, great relationship with somebody. You're just not dating them. Um, And in fact, that's how it should be. If you're treating someone casually just because you're fucking them casually, you probably suck. You could still have very fulfilling things that aren't a relationship, like hard and fast in terms of like being exclusive or like boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. You know, there's no harm with that. Now, The irrational fear that if they don't ask her out soon, they will be snapped up in another relationship and they can lose your chance. What do you think about that, Dan? I get it. Like, I 100% understand where you're coming from, for sure. And that's why I kind of like, I'm not going to dissuade you too powerfully from engaging in a little summer fling while you guys are working together. Because, like, even if you're not ready to date them, still being able to, like, hook up with them might be a great thing. Mm -hmm. Um and you don't want to get that FOMO. So, like, I understand that. But I will we- say don't let that fear influence you one way or another. You know what I mean? If that's the only reason you're making moves, you shouldn't be making moves. Like, if you're yeah. not ready, but that fear is kind of tickling the back of your throat, I think a fucked up try is worse than no try at all in this situation. Because for all you know, next summer she's single again and you also are when you're ready. As opposed yes. to doing something with this kind of, like, imaginary foe being the only thing kind of propelling you forward. Like you don't want to be in a situation you're not ready for or not happy with because it's going to bleed into your interactions. Right. Um, You want to, you want to do it genuinely. You want to do it honestly. While I can understand that fear, I don't think that fear should have any bearing in your decision process. We've said a thousand times, it should be a fuck yes or a no. And if, if it's not a, yeah, I'm absolutely 100% ready to commit to this person without any, reservations or you know little sneaky whatever is in the back of my head like the the person i was dating prior to amanda i got into a relationship with them because i was given like kind of an ultimatum and i was worried like i i like them enough to be bummed out at the thought of not still being able to like hang out with them and like hook Mm -hmm. up with them so i i started dating them and it was a terrible idea because i wasn't ready yeah. So if I had chilled, like, who knows how that would have gone if I had been like, no, actually, here's my position, blah, blah, blah. And maybe it would have been like, OK, cool. I don't want to see you anymore. I feel like I'm wasting time. You know, that would have sucked. Probably would have hurt. But like the way the relationship crumbled also fucking sucked. So yeah. 
you know, it's it's something you've got to be aware of. And and you seem to have very, very good foresight in this kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I think you you just need to keep trusting your gut because your gut seems to have a, a pretty strong sense of like what's best for you. And unfortunately, Niall and I can't guess what that is. Um, mm-hmm. But you've been doing you've been making some very good calls. So I I believe in you to make the right call. I would say, yeah, just try your hardest not to let that fear influence where you're at because again if it's the deciding factor i don't think things are going to go well and like fuck it if they do get in a relationship like good for them and who knows what the future holds you know what i mean if if they're in one it's probably for a reason and again it probably also didn't come out of nowhere either so it's like if you made your move but they were almost at relationship status with this other person it probably wouldn't work out anyway i don't think it's going to happen that quickly and let's address sort of the uh, and again I'm not saying that you're a bad person, but there is a root of toxic masculinity in the idea of being like women can be removed from your chessboard by other men. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I I think that that's not a great way to view women or people as sort of like things that could options that could be removed from you, despite the fact that like, yes, you might not have the chance to hook up with someone because they start dating someone else. But like, that's not the purpose that they exist. That's Mm -hmm. not why they're there is like, people aren't opportunities for you. And I don't think that's how you view them or, or what you think, especially with the rest of the question. But I want to, I just want to address that because I think that can lead to some problematic thinking and some, and some, you know, ingrained toxicity that could manifest itself in in bad ways later on down the road. And Mm -hmm. for people who don't seem to have as, as good a head to shoulder or head on their shoulders as you do. I think it's a, it's a slippery slope for a lot of people. So I just want to address to address that sort of mentality and just by all means, there are opportunities. The person isn't the opportunity. Yeah. Now the last question is, do I try to be friends with her for a while before making any dating slash relationship moves? And unfortunately, I don't think we can answer that without knowing more about how you feel and how they feel and how you guys reconnect. Right. Cause it could be you guys reconnect and it's like, Oh, who are you again? Oh yeah. That guy. Or it could be like, back to how it was instantly and it could be great but even then you could feel like you need more time or you could feel like no fuck it i actually really like this person i'm willing to give it a shot and i think these are all things you're gonna have to feel when you get there because unfortunately there isn't like a playbook right there's not like oh in this situation you have to do two weeks of friends and then you know that's not how it works i think you're gonna have to use your best judgment when you guys reconnect about how you feel how you guys interact and like just the general kind of sense of like the job and what you guys are talking about, etc. And again, you have a good head on your shoulders. I don't have much fear that you'll do a good job, but I don't think we can really answer that one, right? You just got to do what's best. I will also posit this. Why wouldn't you want to be friends with the person you want to date? Well, yes, that's the thing. I don't think there is also a delineation between the two. You know, I think... Even while you're fucking someone, you're still friends with them, right? And that's, I think that's kind of where it has to be. I think you do need to be friends with this person. And I, I think you need to be aware of like the fact that they are a potential romantic partner and sexual partner as to not sort of cut, like, you know, firmly entrench yourself in I'm not interested mode. Exactly. Seem yeah. Like you're like, not interested. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to run the risk of, of entering into like this, this pattern of, that you're not a, a potential partner or that, like as now said, that you're not interested, that could be jarring for them to then hit, be hit with the like, you want to go grab a drink with me tonight? Mm-hmm. Uh, if they're like, oh, wait, hold on, what? Um, so yeah, just, you know, maintain a flirty atmosphere and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, I think you definitely should make sure that the friendship is still there because as now said, if you haven't seen them in a while and haven't like actually hung out with them, if, if you start to like try to rekindle a, a friendship and you're like, oh, this actually, this actually kind of sucks, mm-hmm. it will definitely color your path towards a romantic encounter for sure. Yeah. So I don't think the friendship aspect of that is, is optional. I think as for when you want to make dating relationship moves, again, it, it's on you and it, it's on how you're feeling because it turns out you, you might get there and not be into it, right? Or she might already have a partner or you guys might ju- not just like jive the way you used to, et cetera, right? So you just feel it out. And again, 
you do seem to have a good head on your shoulders, so I believe in you. And, and hey, hey let, us, let us know how it goes. And the pandemic did a lot of weird shit to a lot of people. For all you know, you get in there and she's like full. The government's trying to inject us with nano machines. Like happened to a lot of people. Yeah. So you, you do want to, like I said, dip your, dip your toes in the water before you jump in. Yeah. All right. Well, hope that helped. This is by OK Control 9284. My first date seemed platonic. Is it weird to ask a date to sit next to me? I've been on five first dates lately, and all but one felt really platonic. Normally for the first date, I do drinks by the harbor, where we sit across from each other talking for an hour or three, then leave, give each other a hug, and call the night. However, after the first five dates, I'm starting to think they're coming off as way too platonic. I don't go for the kiss on first dates, because after spending hours sitting across from each other, not touching, it feels weird to go for a kiss. I want to do something to build chemistry, or at least test it. First thought is to ask them to sit beside me. Does it seem weird to ask for two people to sit next to each other in a booth on a first date? I'm not sure how to work around this. I mean, the harbor is a great spot. Sounds great. very romantic, I'm sure. But if this is your issue, don't go there. Go to a bar and sit beside each other at the bar. No, that is like no, 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 don't don't sit beside each other ever. You fucking weirdo. What are you doing? I hate. I hate when I've got a table on a date and they sit beside each other. No, I'm talking Everyone about sitting at a bar. You have to sit beside each other. Okay. I thought you meant a bar, not the bar at the bar. I thought you meant no, at bar. No, at the bar. Okay, it yes. Is like, That's great. Sitting at the bar is the best place to have a date. Hands down. I'm not just saying that because I'm a bartender, but you get usually the best service. You get way better service at the bar, nine times out of ten in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And if you're cool – and like have a good conversation the bartender will almost always pick up on that and if you're not being a douchebag they will probably wingman the shit out of you for sure um i think that's a good idea but unless you're sitting at a bar do not sit beside each other you fucking weirdo i, I hate mean it's it. one thing nope. it's one thing if like you guys are are like dating and dating and dating and like you know whatever no, if, if you then because like if you're on a date with your partner you should be able to fucking go an hour sitting across from each other if you have to be sitting side by side on the booth, fucking touching each other and being I'm weird and annoying, dry hump I, each other. I'm just saying it's like if, if you're at the harbor and one one table has a much better view of the water, yeah, I would like I'd have no problem sitting beside my my date or my partner. No, I, again, as long as you're not like mounting each other and they, all over they each always other. Always are. There's never a table that sits beside each other and are cool. I've never seen it. They're always fucking weirdos. It's. I mean, yeah, that's that's true. Like for um, real. Um, I, I will say, like, Dane raises a really good point. If you're down at the fucking harbor and you're having drinks and after an hour and a half, it's the sunset, be like, oh, get over here and we can both watch the sunset. Amazing. Like, that's that's good. That's natural. That's fine. You've talked for a while and then you kind of get closer. Or if this is your, really your issue, break up your fucking date. Go from one place to another. You know what I mean? As after the sunset, maybe be like, oh, we'll hit a bar nearby. Because then you guys get to talk and stand and walk and maybe hold hands or put an arm around each other. And it at least makes it a little bit more dynamic than just sitting there almost like an interview for three hours. That's That was going to be my next thing is being like, look, the harbor is actually a fucking badass spot to go. It's <laughs> I'm sure it's a gorgeous place. The weather is nice. Hey, you know what I mean? Hey, it might be shit. We didn't think about this. It could be a fishy, oily harbor with like – angry dock workers throwing <laughs> <ropes> everywhere. <laughs> There's like, just like old timey, like 19, like 1800 London dock workers just mm. brawling and fucking there's, there's a guy from fucking, uh, uh, what is that? Guy movie? from Boston. I could have been, been a contender. Oh, no, the guys in Boston just this. fighting the British for three days straight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, I mean, maybe do a quick vibe check or, or like bring a friend to the Harbor and be like, Hey, is this a cool place to bring hey. a date? Friends like, I don't go down by the harbor, not at night. <laughs> Wait, man, you're going to the harbor? The fuck's wrong with you? They've got those um, bad seagulls. <laughs> I think what Nell said, I, I think, like, look, go to the harbor, enjoy the enjoy the view or whatever, and be like, hey, I know a really cool bar nearby. And go to a cool bar nearby. Mm-hmm. And that way, one, as Nell said, I think that's a great time to, if if you guys are, like, flirting and vibing and feeling it, I don't, there's nothing wrong with going for a handhold. I think it is it is like the most harmless thing that like, you know, even if they're not really feeling it, it's such a, a small imposition to like hold someone's hand for like mm-hmm. 10 minutes before you get to another bar. And yeah. if they're if they're not into it, it it'll be very obvious, you know, yeah. but I think I think like going for a handhold, it's so cute. It's so harmless. It's but it's a great way to be like, hello, I'm I'm yeah. physically want to touch you. 
in such and, a hey, if they don't want to touch you at all that's a pretty good sign that you shouldn't go for the kiss or the things aren't going well yeah and like some people are weird about specific types of touch so it could be a hand thing blah blah, blah but they'll probably explain that you know what i mean if they're like look sorry i just don't like to hold hands my hands are sweaty and i'm whatever like if they really kind of make excuses for it it's probably okay you could probably try again with something else later maybe but like it's a pretty good gauge but honestly I don't like I think it's a very uncomfortable thing to ask a girl you just met to come sit beside you in a booth because like they don't know you yet. Right. You know, it seems very like it's it's so whatever, but it seems very controlling. Yeah. And on top of that, it's like it's very hard for them to say no. So -hmm. they kind of have to do it if they want to or not. Right. And it's just like I, I don't think it's a comfortable thing to ask. I think if it happens naturally, great. If there's a reason like, oh, come over here, we can check out the sunset or like something like that. Sure. Go to, again, Dane, go to a bar, like sit at the bar. That's a great fucking way to do it naturally. No one's going to be weirded out by that. Right. And like I said, you're, if you're not going on a date and sitting at the bar, you're, you're doing it wrong. (laughs) You're making a very big mistake. Cause it's like, you can, as, as the date goes on and you get more comfortable and you, you pick up vibes and you, and you get a feeling for them, like their leg is right there. You you can touch their leg. You can touch their hands. Like they're right there. You know what I mean? Like a a hand on the shoulder, whatever. There's, there's so many opportunities to engage in, in sort of like a, a physical touch. And it's so much easier than like reaching across the table or, you know, coming back from the bathroom and sitting on their side of the table. Like it's, it's so easy to, to be sitting right beside someone. And like I said, the likelihood that like the bartender is going to be like, you guys are cool. Here's a shot, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're going to be in good hands if you go to a cool place. Also, like there's more kind of happening at the bar. Like you'll hear them talk to people. Maybe you'll talk to people, but usually people are kind of brief or stick to themselves at the bar. But like there's bottles to look at. There's drinks he's going to make. And you can be like, oh, shit, what's that? That looks cool. Like it's kind of more energetic. So it's not just you two staring at each other across the table. Mm -hmm. Um, There's there's more to it. It's a little bit more dynamic. So I would say don't just go to one place and sit there like an interview. Definitely do not sit at the same side on a booth randomly (laughs) because you're going to be a fucking weirdo. I'm sorry. I hate it so much. And everyone hates it. Everyone I work with are like, ugh, look at them. I know they're going to be shit because they both sat on the same side. And guess what? They always are. So don't do that. (laughs) Sit at a bar. Turn into a pub crawl. Have a reasonable excuse to sit on the same side, like a sunset or a fucking movie on the TV or something. There. Boom. Yeah. Here's something we talk about a lot, but... You know, always good to, to talk about oh, things. Uh, <laughs> this is Educator Quirky in 1933. Do guys actually care how it looks during sex? I, female 18, am still a virgin. Although I don't have a boyfriend or anything, I think about losing my virginity a lot. The thing I always think about is how everything will look. I get compliments about my body, but no one ever actually sees me completely naked, legs spread, etc. Do guys care about how weird natural boobs look when they're laying on your back? Do guys care if it's not pink or doesn't look how women in porn do? Do guys care about how the moan sounds? What about the faces women make? Is it a turnoff? Uh, unless they're shit. Pretty much no to all the above. Now, I'm concerned about the pink question. I think it's like the porn pink. Okay. I'm just saying like if, if there's a color not pink adjacent or, or skin adjacent, perhaps get that looked at. Well, okay. You don't know this person's ethnicity. So I'm saying skin adjacent. Yes. Okay, good. I, I'm glad you clarified that. Um, but like, I think it's just like the very like porny porn pink vagina is what they're talking about. Yeah. I know what they're saying, but I'm just, you know, I just want to, yes, if it's green, Sure. If, you, if you've got a, if you've got something that isn't close to your skin color, if you don't have human colors, go get it checked out. Yeah, unless you're and not a human. Unless you're not human, in which case, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no one really cares. Again, you're gonna have some asshole. My old landlord had a, a tenant who, if anybody came and wasn't shaved, would literally banish them to the bathroom with a shaver until they came back like completely smooth. That's crazy. Um, Oh, yeah. And people like some people did it, which is even worse. Uh, So that guy's a piece of shit and he exists. Uh, But I think in general, no, no one cares. Everyone's so thrilled to have sex. And like guys aren't fucking perfect by any, any measure of the imagination. You know what I mean? So it's like they're also going to be making weird faces, doing weird sounds. And like, 
he rolls when they bend over and you know like we're all in the same boat here so it's like unless you're sleeping with someone who sucks i think you're good I, I will say there are obviously outliers like if i've complained before about someone i slept with whose moans were like more like I, i've said it before porn for the hard of hearing it was very fake very loud very performative put me off and was also quite rude to everyone I was living with. So, like, you know, there are outliers like that. You know, if you're really putting on a, a moan or whatever, maybe it can be a bit of a turnoff. But, like, in general, you're good. Uh, that, that would be my caveat here. As long as everything is natural or, or organic, like what the faces you're making, the noises you're making, as long as those are, like, the noises and faces you would normally make, but fine, whatever. Because, like, the one thing that that freaks me out is when I feel like there should be a camera in the room mm -hmm. or that, like, there, there's someone else in the room who needs to be appeased because I'm like, I don't. What are you doing? Why are you making those yeah. noises? Why? Why are you, like, pouting at me right mm -hmm. now? Like, and it's the same can be said for if you are worried that, like, you know, your roles are going to look weird or that like your leg muscle will flap and it's like you only want to like rigidly like tense your muscles and get in that one position that you know looks good like that's going to be far more of a turnoff than you being natural and and bending over and and having a tummy fold or like having a loose leg calf when we're you're fucking you know what i mean like again it's not a performance it's not going on camera presumably so like this almost like working for an external gaze or your gaze, because assuming that that's what you're into, it no, like naturalness is always going to be so much more attractive than this like constructed like posing. You have to think about it this way. It's like, how would you rather be fucked with with passion and intensity and, you know, someone paying attention to you, like all that kind of stuff or someone doing their best to look good? Yeah, because I'm telling you right now, the sex if you wanted me to be flexing and making sure that I'm always looking the, the best that I possibly can, you are getting like 20% of my, my sexual prowess because all of my attention and focus is going to be on, on that and not on you. And if I'm having sex, I want the attention to be on what we're doing. Yeah. hundred percent. So I wouldn't worry about that shit. Just worry about having fun. Yeah. Also, Hey, let me tell you right now. I don't think there's no one gives a shit about what like natural boobs Look, who cares? It's great. Yeah, I want to see them bounce. I want to see them all over the place. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. This is throw ra one nine nine three six two. How do I end things without saying I know they're lying? I, <laughs> twenty five year old female, have been dating this guy, twenty five year old male, for one and a half months now, and things have been going great. It's been easy and fun. Yesterday, as I was coming back from my vacation, vacation abroad, I missed my connecting flight due to a health incident and was feeling pretty terrible, to which I messaged him about. He's usually great at responding, but didn't for seven hours, which I thought was strange, but didn't question until later. As I was on Instagram, I noticed he was active. He messaged me at night, apologizing, so he didn't have his phone with him, and he went biking and didn't see my messages. This just feels like a blatant lie, and I can't get past it. Am I overreacting? How can I end things without saying, I know you are active on your phone, but not responding to me? It was hurtful to me to know he saw my messages indicating a low point for me for the first time and chose to ignore it and then lie about it. Okay, there's, I guess, a couple things here. Uh, my Facebook messenger says I'm always online, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but it, it does. I'm pretty sure. It's hard to tech because, like, you know, obviously I'm not on it, but, like, there have been times where people have sent me messages and been like, yeah, man, no, I was I was at work. Sorry. Like, I was definitely not on my phone on a Friday night at 9 yeah. p.m. I was getting my ass absolutely beat. So that could be a thing. It could just be, you know, the fact that he, maybe if he was on a bike ride, maybe he had his phone on and Spotify running, you know, mm -hmm. and that was what triggered the fact that it's like, oh, he's active. There's that. There's technology getting in the way Two, maybe he just didn't have the fucking the gumption to to fucking deal with what you're sending him right now. And it's it's not on people's it's not on everyone to be able to drop everything and deal with what you're dealing with. Unfortunately, like you have no idea what was going on his, his side of things. Maybe he was exhausted. Maybe he was, you know, feeling kind of shitty himself. Like you don't know. So to be like, I was at a low point and he should, she shouldn't ignore me. And I deserve a, a response immediately because I wanted one kind of sucks. Yeah. Also to just be like, he's lying when like you have zero proof of that. You have that. He was active on Instagram, which as Dane mentioned, it's like, Apps are very often either on in your pocket, just saying you're on even though you're not, or like he could have it open on like his fucking laptop at home, right? Like there are so many 
ways that that could be happening that are far more realistic than him being like, I'm actively lying to you and didn't give a shit about your situation. And even then, it's like you've been dating for one and a half months and you already sound like a lot. No offense. But it's like you don't know they're lying. So that's already a thing. You can suspect they're lying. That's one thing. But to be like, I know they're lying. That's wrong. Two, is it like, uh, I don't know. People have lives. It's realistic for someone to have been busy for seven hours, especially when you're not there. If he's not expecting to be in contact with you because you're traveling all day or because you're abroad. Yeah, fuck. Maybe he made plans to go out for the day. This seems like a yeah. massive overreaction. I think it's very unfair on your partner. Should you break up with them? Probably for their sake. Yeah. I mean, that's all. It's always funny when the it's like, yeah, I think you should, but not for the reason that you're you're suggesting. Many things could have happened, right? They could have told the truth. Uh, if you don't trust them, don't date them. That's maybe a you thing, maybe a them thing. I feel like in this current situation, it's a you thing. Is it possible that they did this? Yes. Is it possible that their app was on when they weren't on it? Yes. Is it possible that they saw their your message and didn't really know how to respond? Sure. Is that a crime? I wouldn't say so. Is it possible they saw it and didn't care? Sure. But out of all those things, there's so many possibilities, and you've chosen, I know they're lying. I don't think I mean, at the fair. end of the day, is if that's how you feel about this person, if you think they're going to lie to you, then you don't trust them. Therefore, as now said, you shouldn't date them. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. If you don't trust someone or if you think people are lying to you and have no problem lying to you, then you shouldn't date them. Just mm-hmm. flat out. It, it's that fucking simple. The second you don't trust someone is the second you shouldn't be with them. Is it their fault? Not necessarily, especially not in this case. So, I mean, yeah, like if that's the case, if you don't trust them, break up with them. That's your answer. But again, don't say you know someone's lying when you don't. This is uh, by La Douleur. Said I love you on first date. Is that normal? This co-worker I started working with a month or two ago, and I went on a dinner date. Upon the date, in the midst of making out, he said, I love you. And I stopped and was like, I'm sorry, what? He said, I do. I love you. What am I supposed to say? And how do I react to this? I told him I've never had a I love you come out this fast before. Yeah, I think that's something you need to address immediately and or run away from. Yep. That is very, very intense and potentially very manipulative. So I think what you need to do is be like, hey, it's cool that you feel that way. Thanks for telling me, I guess. But like for me, I love you is a, a pretty serious thing. And we don't know each other that well. And we haven't gotten to know each other like nearly long enough. So I feel like. I'm going to need to put a pause on us because you might be attributing too much too fast to to what we are. A hundred percent. And the thing is, it's like, I think this would be a different question if they said I love you and like maybe like blurted it out or said it and then like it wasn't really like addressed because it could be just a mistake, right? Or it could be whatever. Or it could be like, you know, oh, I love you. Like I almost fucking told a customer I love them the other day because – I'm used to us chatting and being like, all right, love you. Bye. And like, I was just having a really casual chat about Elden Ring with them. And it just, I almost said it when I walked off. That would have been funny. But like the fact that you said what, and they said, no, I do. I love you. Yeah. The doubling down is. That's terrifying. And that's not good. And to clarify, they do work together, but apparently they work like different shifts. So like they usually see each other five, 10 minutes as they cross over. So they don't even work together very much and don't know each other that well. So it's even weirder than it possibly could have been. They don't love you because they can't love you because they don't know you. If you guys had been working together for like five years and there was a a whole Ross, Rachel, will they, won't they? And like you guys were really close and you spent a lot of time together and you hung out a lot. It's like, okay. And I love you might might sneak out there because you actually had time to get to know this person. But Mm -hmm. the fact that he's only known you and from work for like a month or whatever you said, and then you've gone on one date and he was like, I love you. No, that's too much too fast. Sorry. You can't. He's either trying to love bomb you. He's a psycho or he actually thinks he is. And I don't know which is the worst. Yeah. None of those are good situations. So like I said, I think you do need to be like, Hey, we need to pump the brakes here and address this because uh, you don't love me. And mm-hmm. if you do think that you do, then we're going to have to call it quits because it is, that is an unhealthy uh, jump to, to attachment there. And it, it is not for me. Sorry. I, I would also fucking love to know how he reacts to that. Cause I'm going to guess not well, probably tears <laughs> or anger, maybe, both. maybe anger. But like, I also think that would be a pretty good indication if he's like, uh, you know what? That was really weird. I get it. Then maybe after the break, it is worth revisiting. 
But if he's just like, but I love you. Yeah. Run. If, if, if job he time? triple downs on it and is like, no, from the moment I met you, I knew I loved you. I'd be like, okay, dude, like you got to know this is bad. You got to yeah. know this isn't going to work. I just told you it's not working. But it, it's also just a very clearly known thing that that is super weird. Like how I met your mother makes fun of it all the time. You know what I mean? Back in the day, it was like Ted Mose being someone saying that you love them on the first date. And it was ridiculed throughout the entire show. We all know this isn't okay. We all yeah, know. There, there's a lot of things that we know aren't okay that have well, been ridiculed in, in TV shows. <laughs> like yeah, I know. I know. It. But still, it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Don't tell you. Don't tell people you love them on the first date. Yeah. Just, I mean, like, look at how many questions we get where it's like, we've known each other for one year and we're married with four kids. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, people, you're going too fast. <laughs> I know the world's ending, but we can, we could take our time a little bit. <laughs> um, I've got a, I've got a quick one here. This is okay. from goof K F B. Is it wrong to ask him to wear a condom for oral sex? I want to do things with him, but I have a contamination OCD and a pregnancy phobia. So coming into contact with cum gives me anxiety. Even if it's, even if there's no possibility of pregnancy, I know flavored condoms are a thing. Would that be okay, or is it too much to ask? Uh, I don't think it's too much to ask at all. Um, I do think if you have a problem like this, seeing someone and trying to get over it is a, or to deal with it or to manage it is a good practice. But like, if someone is that upset at that request, I don't think they're worth dating. So, I think it goes both ways as well. I think if if I was seeing someone and they were like, the only thing I can offer you is condomed blowjob i don't think i would want to continue having a sexual relationship with that person yeah no that's for sure i mean more like if they're like no do it anyway don't date yes. them uh, right. if they aren't down for that that's fine i think it's like in every like in every situation we ever talk about it, it's always like you know with kinks you're definitely okay to say no and move on you know what I mean? If if you bring up a kink someone's not into, great, move on. It's when you start trying to pressure someone into stuff that that's an issue. Everyone's well within their rights to be like, okay, that's not what I want. I'm going to walk away, especially if they're doing that genuinely and not in a manipulative like way to somehow get you to still do it. Yeah. So I, I, think- I honestly don't think I would love that, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, no, I mean, the, like, I think, I think you're going to be very hard pressed to find people who are like, Yes, this is this is all I want out of a sexual relationship is a blowjob with a condom on because it's yeah. I mean, like, I again, I am not anti condom. I am not a uh, condom ruined sensation and everything. But I think I, I just I just do not think that I could mentally enjoy it knowing that the reason it's there is because everything you're doing grosses you out. You know what I mean? Well, that's, like that's another thing as well. Right. So I yeah. think. I think that would be a huge mental thing is being like, oh, okay, you are terrified that I'm going to give you a disease. Also, for some reason, you're also terrified that giving a blowjob will get you pregnant. Th- like, none of this sounds like you want to do it. And yeah, therefore, it wouldn't be like, nice it, having someone do something they don't want to do. Um, yeah, but- like, it, it, it feels like a concession that you're doing because you know you need to do something. And, and this is like the option that you've come up with, which one – doesn't sound like it's going to be pleasurable in terms of like actual sensation. And two, the mental aspect of it, of me being like, you probably fucking hate this. Yeah. Having you like reluctantly do something that you hate because you feel like you need to is not exactly hot to me at all. Cause like, I don't know if you've ever received a, like a reluctant blow or like get a blowjob and you're like, Oh, you're clearly not into this. Like you mm-hmm. don't want to do this. And I'm like, like, that's the worst feeling in the world where you have to be like, okay, yeah, like I'm, I'm good. Thank yeah, you. I'm going to yeah. interrupt your blowjob here because uh, I'm, I am loving this probably less than you are. Yeah. Much like a lot of things. If it's not a fuck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but is it too much to ask? No, not all. I, Absolutely you know, not. everybody's personal. Some people may not mind that. Who knows? Um, and again, yeah. it is up to them if they're not into it. And once they're not trying to use that to manipulate you into doing stuff you don't want to do, then that's fine. You know, if they want to move on, great. Um, yeah. But I do want to double know. down and, and, and reiterate that I'm not saying that this is a, a bad move by any means. I'm just saying that you need to be 
aware of the 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 reaction and not take that as a means to or as a as indicative of like the fact that you should change or not do it yeah. like if someone is just like no thank you i'm gonna pass then don't change your guns you know what i mean like stick to them stick yeah. to what you want it you are completely and 100 percent valid in wanting this um but as Nell said i think this is maybe something you should go and address and talk to a therapist about yeah i've never heard anyone say don't change your guns <laughs> don't change your guns <laughs> don't it's, change them that's me fucking up the phrase stick to your guns yeah, i love it <laughs> i love it uh, i think it is time for tinders but before we do that potato baby is out in the world potato baby has been released it's uh it's over on our patreon because it was all spawned through a lovely addition to our patreon so thank you very much for giving me and Dan COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if you would like to see what I can only describe as the most adorable elder Torah. Yeah. Like a starchy nightmare. I, I think beautiful I th- boy. I think you should probably go check him out. Uh, he is exclusively available currently on our Patreon. So if you want to join and, and see what we've done, see, <laughs> see what horror we've wrought. Um, Head on over to fbuddiespodcast.com and click the Patreon link or patreon.com slash fbuddies. Uh, on top of that, if you're looking for 20% off on Love Honey, go to lovehoney.co forward slash fbuddies and use code fuckbuddies20, all capitals, uh, for our limited time offer code, which will be expiring soon. Get in there and get your stuff while you still can. Yeah. I right, tender time. Dindy time. Off. So every week we go over Tinder profiles that we source out in the wild and just kind of calling for red flags in the hopes of making your online experience a little bit better. Uh, this is Ding. Hello, my name is Ariane. I'm a food lover, smart and outgoing person. So I'm looking for someone to distract me. Someone who will play with me in bed, not my feelings. I don't know if people see this, but if you're one in a million's guys who do, then MSSG, all capitals with spaces, me here on Instagram or Snapchat. And then there's their Snapchat and say capital T dash T O R to make it happen. That seems like a lot of effort. <laughs> it does I'm seem assuming... a little suspicious too. Why do I have to put a weird code in? Yeah, I don't know. I, I assume probably to like prove that you've read the message. I know that's like a thing back in the old days, the old, the olden times. You would that's... have to like people would hide like things in their mm. profile and be like. You know, make sure you mess or like do this so I know that you've read my profile. Weird. That's that's a very like applying to literary agents thing where it's like if you didn't read this and get this specific code word, you're going in the fucking pile, the bin pile. Yeah. And now I don't know if like the Instagram Snapchat thing, I don't know if Twitter or Tinder like scans that and like bans you for using outside platforms. I'm assuming there's something like that because like there's no other reason to mangle the spelling so horribly. But it's like, I've seen plenty of people be like, message me on Instagram. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to give this a three because I do like the phrase, play with me in bed and not my feelings or whatever. I it's think that's kind of cute. Uh, so I'm going to give it a three. Everything else is kind of like meh. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Want me to keep going or you got more? I got, I got none. Okay. This is Andrea. I'm looking for BFFs for my boyfriend or other couples to hang out with, not to date. For some reason, the BFF side only lets me chat with girls, so that's why I'm on this side of the app. <laughs> okay, that's uh, interesting. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it's I guess like kind of cool, but it's a little alarming that your boyfriend isn't capable of. Like, does he want friends? Like, what- that's the thing. It's like if he does, why isn't he doing it? Yeah, he could just go on the the BFF side of Bumble and and look for friends that way. If that's really what he wants to do. Yeah, but instead it's like her with this. Like I, I, I don't know. It seems sus. Yeah, to go on a dating app and be like, I'm not looking to date. Fuck off. Get out yeah. of here. It's a zero, I guess, because a bad dating profile. It is. A, it's a terrible dating profile. My name is Lee. Now this could be Dane. Let's see. I deleted social media a year ago. Not Dane, and it's been heavenly. I love my son. Dane. The occult, spooky things. Dane. Halloween. Anything horror, movies, stories, etc. BDSM. Metal. 90s rap, playing guitar, piercings and tattoos, dark humor, and video games. Dang. Uh, a smattering of things <laughs> in you're, there. You're pretty, not... you're pretty up on most of those. Maybe not piercings and tattoos, but like or metal movies, or horror stories. I do like, like I enough do enough metal. Eh. I, I will force you to. Anyway, I'm not into cleanliness, drugs, or fooling around with you and your wife. Not sure what I'm looking for, so I can't answer that. 
My last Tinder man said I was too old, crying, laughing. Uh, <laughs> and then just there's a cat, two flags, and I guess a baby face. P.S. I suck at opening this app. Um, it's I'm going to give it a five because like it's an OK app, or like profile in terms of like the information you've given me about what you're into. Mm-hmm. But then there's a lot of stuff that undermines that with like, you know, the I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah, right. I, I don't know what I'm looking for. Someone said I was too old. I suck at opening this app. All pretty garbage. Yeah, and it's like, it's fine if you're not sure and you're just kind of browsing. Just don't say it then. Yeah. Right? Like, just yeah. keep that to yourself. <laughs> I think a, a four for me. Okay. Uh, Lena. Things I like. Converse Chucks. Humans with secure attachment styles. Men who speak to a therapist regularly. Doritos. Chicken nuggets. And going to the gym. Things I dislike. Peter Pan syndrome. Vegan cheese. Uncreative comments about my pension for Converse Chucks. I mean, look, some of us don't have an option when it comes to vegan cheese, okay? And sometimes Mm -hmm. vegan cheese can be okay, as demonstrated by Guy Fieri. Yeah, in Flavortown. They have good vegan cheese in Flavortown. And you know what, guys? I'll say it. It was good. Yeah. Now was very adamant. He was was very disappointed in me. But we had to get trash can nachos, and it was the only way that I I was very supportive. Thank you very much. You were supportive, but you, you were hesitant. Would I have preferred real cheese? Yes. Am I a boy? Am I your boy? Would I go to the depths of vegan hell to to save you from tummy troubles? Yes. And then I give myself tummy troubles with a very, very sweet drink. (laughs) Different kind of tummy troubles. I think that was just diabetes manifesting inside me. Give me a rating. Uh, I mean, I, I, there's, eh, I'm going to give it a six. Yeah. It's just the right side of good, but it's kind of bland. Yeah. I mean, there are things in there like that I think are cute, like the chicken nuggets. I think it's very cute that you like chicken nuggets. Well, who doesn't? Let's be fair. This person's nameless. I'm going to call them Bumble. Bumble says, we'll get along if you like listening to Jordan Peterson, have similar values, complimentary lifestyles, date night every week, and not going to bed angry. I mean, a lot of that's okay, but the Jordan Peterson. What? Is- yeah. I mean, unless she says she likes listening to him because he has that funny Kermit voice. <laughs> and not what he's saying. Maybe she just really likes that, like, oh, you see, this is my Jordan <laughs> Peterson. Okay. I've actually never heard what he sounds like, but yeah, he sounds actually... like this. This is how he sounds. I kind of want to check him out. Let me, uh, let me, let me pull up a, a video of, of Jordan Peterson. You're going to have to, I'm going to find something he says, Jordan Peterson. It doesn't strike me as a particularly uh, just or empathic solution. Oh, man. He does sound like Kermit. Okay, I'm, it does, doesn't strike me as a just solution. Maybe we should mock someone's voice. Uh, <laughs> it's Jordan Peterson. I will mock that man until the day he's dead. That's fair. Uh, so we're giving that one a zero? Yeah. I mean, the second you say anything in, in light of or in favor of Jordan Peterson, yeah, you're done to me. Uh, last one? Yeah. This is Esther. Don't fall in love with me, please. I'm back on this app because I'm tired of drama and looking for casual. I'm quite picky and interested in smart people only. Sapiosexual, kiss face, probably losing my time, but giving this a shot. Add me on Instagram. I travel for work, X. Again, anytime anyone says anything along the lines of like, this is probably wasting my time, probably going to yeah. delete this app, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm just like, okay, if you're, if you're already telling me how little effort you're going to put into this, mm-hmm. which makes me want to give you zero amounts of effort, which is what I would give you in this rating zero and also a left swipe because I, I if if you're gonna tell me how uninvested you are already mm-hmm. sorry not interested don't fall in love with me please fuck off with that uh tired of drama i'm back on this app fuck off with that quite picky there's nothing wrong with being picky but i think there is something wrong with saying it be picky by all means but like yeah. why are you saying it like what what does that change nothing so get rid of it i don't know i think all of it's pretty shit yeah i don't like it i'm getting it a zero even the like interest in smart people only it's like then figure that out you know what i mean like i don't know why you're front loading it with that that just sounds to me like classist intelligence comes in a lot of different ways are you just going to be like sorry you don't have a phd not interest you're not a doctor not interest okay whatever Bye. Yeah. like i would like to see a doctor whip up a mean fucking homebrew game like dane does not gonna happen but do you accept D intelligence woman <laughs> okay does she does she? I don't know. Probably not. I she wants someone wanna... smart, like Jordan Peterson. I just didn't want to repronounce Esther because there's a isn't it S- Esther? Not Esther. Es- there's a I don't know. Esther has a th. 
It's just, I don't know, I keep saying Esther, and I don't like saying it. Oh, wow, okay, well, we've immediately weeded you out. No <laughs> intelligence, that, can't even Whoa. fucking read her name right. Whoa. That's, I can read it right, I just can't pronounce it right. It's Esther. Yeah, I know. I can read it perfectly fine. Say it. Esther. There you go. Yeah, see? Wow, so smart, I learned so quickly. You're, damn, okay. Jordan Peterson. I'm so impressed with you, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it uh, with that incredible Jordan Peterson impression. Um, thank you very much for listening. As Niall mentioned, we have Potato Baby ready for you to consume. Well, not consume. Whoa. Please don't eat our Potato Baby. Don't you um, touch our child. Head on over to FBuddiesPodcast.com. Click the Patreon link. He is available for all levels. It doesn't matter what tier you pledge at. Um, you will get to see but- Potato Baby. The higher pledges make him happy. Yes, that is that is true. Like the higher the pledge, the more money we have to pay for nice things, maybe get him in a, a fancy school so that people on mm-hmm. Tinder will be impressed by his intelligence. Yeah, he only has one outfit so far, but it is real baby clothes. So go us. If you have a question that you want to send us, um, please head on over to fbuddiespodcast.com. Click the contact form. Fill it out. Give yourself an agent name. We'll keep you completely anonymous, and we'll get to your question as soon as we can. We apologize. Uh, Agent Palm Tree, was it? Yep. They had sent their question in, but we had already uh, done the Love Honey episodes, and we recorded a bunch prior to our trip. Um, So all those episodes were already recorded. Um, We usually get you in in like a week. We get you in as quick as we can. That's for sure. Uh, We do have priority queue on the Patreon, just in case you do have emergency questions. It's true. And finally, head on over to lovehoney.co slash fbuddies and use our limited time promo code fuckbuddies20. That's all capitals. And get yourself 20% off the entire store, anything you want. And treat yourself to a little summer, little summer toy. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Josh Eagle and the Harvest Seeds for their song, Paper Stars. Got some bad sex writing for us? Oh, uh, let's see if I do. Excuse, this is Of Love and Shadows by Isabel Allende. Excuse me, senorita. Are you a whore? Francisco prefer- prepared to defend Irene in the justifiable eventuality sh- that the brunette should hit Irene over the head with her pocketbook, but nothing like that happened. On the contrary, she further inflated her breasts like two balloons ready to explode and smiled, gladdening the night with a gleam of gold tooth. I love, you know, we don't give women enough credit for the miracles that are their bodies in the yeah. sense of being able to inflate and deflate their their boobs at will maybe like a, a defensive mechanism as it seems to be sort of like in this situation yeah it's incredible and i'm i'm so glad that male authors are willing to give women the the time and the spotlight that they deserve hey i would like to point out this was written by a lady named isabel well that's a pen name definitely a man who wrote this I would fucking hope so. Uh, yeah, man, that, like that intimidation check. It's like I can morph my breasts into whatever form I desire. I'm inflating them right now out of anger. You're like, Damn, you can't stop man. me. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Jordan Peterson. Oh, God. And I am Kermit. The <laughs> Hi, girl. Uh, we've been your fuck buddies. 